Hello my brothers and sisters in Nerdiness, welcome back to the Spider's Web and in this video we are going to be painting this Middle Eastern number one building from Blotz. This was provided to us by Andy from Wigan War Games and Roleplay Group. Basically he asked me to put them together, he didn't ask me to paint them but I'm painting them for him anyway, whether he likes it or not. And to be honest, he likes it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not going to be going through and doing an instructional video. Um, I'm going to show, you know, you're going to see the images the, of what I'm doing. And every now and again, I may just chip in to explain something I don't know. But I just want to take some time to talk about the channel. Um, not just the channel, but how I'm doing. Um, and hopefully try and get something planned for the future, the foreseeable future. Because, as you know, we've had a really rough few years. Um, the bigger virus took its toll on a lot of people in one way or another. Um, it, funnily enough, leading up to um, all the lockdowns and everything, I was saying I wish I could just stop in the flat, not go out anywhere and just get on with painting and uh, building in models and this, that and the other. And I got the opportunity for near enough a year, in fact, just slightly over a year. Did I do anything? No. The reason being, I just lost all enthusiasm. Not being able to go out was rough. Um, all the shops being shut. Not being able to visit friends. Not being able to visit family. Not being able to socialise. Yeah, a lot of people had it much, much worse. But the issue is when you have um, issues with depression, anxiety, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm not jumping on the bandwagon. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on. But, you know, it does, it does affect you not being able to go out anywhere, not being able to just nip to the shop to get some shopping. Um, the first time I did actually go to the shop, when it started, like started um, easing up, I was that anxious and scared walking around. It was unbelievable. I just wanted to get in there, get in it what I needed, and get out instead of just having to move around like I usually do. Um, but yeah, I just lost all interest in everything. I just couldn't deal with things. Um, nothing. I was nothing that could be done, or that I planned on doing. I could do because the, as I said, the enthusiasm was gone. Um, there was a lot of videos I wanted to make and I didn't make any. And I just think I've just got out of the habit, and I'm trying to get back there again. Um, I know they're coming sporadic at the moment, but they're coming. <laughs> the videos are making an appearance. We are going to be making more and more and more. I've got one, hopefully, that was going to be coming out tomorrow. Oh, not well, going to shoot, hopefully shoot one tomorrow. Um, another gameplay video. I know we started doing these um, while Karina was with us. Um, we've not done any since. And um, I'm trying to get on with um, these models for Andy. We've not just got these ones, we've got the Necromunda models, we've got big um, Cthulhu model and a big dragon model to get done for him. But he's requested we get these ones done first, so that's what we're getting done. Um, and yeah, we're going to try and get things done on a steady basis because if I overload myself at the moment, the videos are going to stop for a long, lot longer. Um, because the mood I'm in at the moment is very close to the mood I was in about 15 years ago when I had to refer myself to um, counselling um, because I got to the stage where I was that low I wanted to say goodbye to everything I don't want to say anything 
that's going to become triggering to anybody but in this case I'm talking about myself I'm not talking about anybody else I didn't want to be here anymore I didn't want to be alive I felt I was a burden to everybody and that was 15 years ago I've been on antidepressants I've been on this that and the other over the years and um, I've been to counselling and since then we all sorts of stuff has happened I've lost my mum I've been in a few very short term relationships one of them um, after we split up we still became, we were still friends um, I was doing things you know I was going getting a benefits and you know getting the money out from the post office she gave me a the cards to do that I was going getting that for her I was going getting shopping for her and I was just getting incredibly uncomfortable at having her money um, with me and I took I went around one day just to let her know that I was going to have to stop and me little did I know that it would have stopped that there and then because I found her body in her house and that knocked me for six as well it was just as I started seeing Ali um, and you know obviously that day was rough I tried you know I went back to counselling grief counselling for, for that um, I don't know whether I've talked about this before or not but the issues that um, the issues like that are rough for me because I've always been conditioned not to show emotion um, I basically blank out can't, well for want of a better phrase I'll blank out I become serious quiet reserved I don't um, some of my dark humour comes out even though I said I become serious a lot of dark humour comes out to try and cope with it military humour you could say um, but I said, I've lost my mum lost my ex-partner um, and couldn't cry for any of it because it was an emotion that I couldn't show or I felt I couldn't show I was wrong but I felt as though I couldn't show it um, and that was all to do with the way I was conditioned and brought up the issue we have is that emotions build up and build up and build up when you try to hide them I'm learning this now but I always I never said that I suppressed my emotions I always said I controlled them um, I kept them under control nothing affected me outwardly um, I really got upset about well not really got upset but if anything happened I was the one that people could turn to because I wasn't the one who was upset I could keep a level head while other people were getting upset and that's you know I could see things from a different point of view um, and be there for other people and all the while not feeling as though anybody was there for me and these feelings build up and build up and build up and the day my feelings exploded was the day I said goodbye to Laddie uh, for those of you who just joined the channel Laddie was uh, my Labrador um, I've had him for almost 14 years 
and we say goodbye to him in May. I didn't cry when my grand passed away. I didn't cry when her sister passed away. I didn't cry when my mum passed away. I didn't cry when my ex-partner, or when I found my ex-partner. I was all, it was all matter of fact, get this done, get that done. Every, not a day goes by since May that I haven't cried. Um, my emotions broke out that day. And I've been overwhelmed with them ever since. I've said things that I wouldn't have normally said. Um, I've been short-tempered. I've been... letting things get to me that, you know, normally I'd have just laughed off or ignored. Um, and it got to the stage where the beginning of July, in fact the day after my 55th birthday, I once again didn't want to be here. Um, and it turned out that a couple of weeks beforehand I was we had a friend here um, who is involved with Andy's Man Club and you can see the bracelet the um, wristbands that I'm wearing for Andy's Man Club um, and he was telling me about or we're talking on camera about the club the fact that there's a one opening in Wigan and I decided then that yeah, I'd go along and see what it was all about. But little did I know that a few weeks later, well, rather a few weeks or a few days later, I can't remember when, the, when we did the video, that I needed to go. Not that I wanted to go or would go out of curiosity, I needed to go. Because um, the day, as I said, the day after my birthday, I was at my lowest point in 15 years. And... Ali got in contact with him and he got in contact with me and basically told me off for not contacting him in the first place but that's something I'm not used to doing I'm not used to turning to somebody I'm not used to being able to talk to somebody and when I do talk to somebody it's like they're trying to get one up on me you know, I tell them how bad I'm feeling and they say, oh, it could be worse, this, you know, I've had to do this. And, you know, it, make, it always seems to go about, it always seems to make it about them rather than me trying to get things off my chest and get things um, sorted out for myself. And normally I'm okay with that, but at this time I wasn't, I needed to get some form of release from my emotional um, outpouring and I'm feeling that I'm getting on the better side for going to Andy's Man Club um, and I'm hoping to try and get more videos done um, I need to be able to keep myself occupied keep my brain occupied so it's not starting to talk to me because the last thing I want is for my brain to start talking to me um, <laughs> if you get me drift because it always tells me rubbish it always gives me the worst possible scenario for anything and start overthinking things and it's never a good thing when that happens but now I've got someone to talk to I go to Wendy's Man Club every Monday we started back at the hospital radio stations and that's keeping my mind occupied. Um, preparing the shows keeps my mind occupied when I'm at home. I'm going to try and start videos a lot more often. Uh, we've got the craft room sorted out so as you can see I can paint again. And hopefully I'm getting to the stage where I can get my life back in order. It's going to be a long time before I can get it back to how it was. I know that. And it may never get there. But I'm taking steps to get there. And hopefully, um, with the help I'm getting now, um, I'll get to 
be able to enjoy life again. I've got two grandkids that I want to see grow up, but I feel as though I, st I still feel sometimes that I shouldn't be here, but those feelings are drifting, they're fading away, and I'm feeling happier about that. I'm going to have my good days, I'm going to have my bad days, but every day I wake up, every day I can get out of bed, I'm seen as a positive. I'm losing weight. I'm trying to get some more um, walking done. I'm trying to get a little bit more exercise done. I can't do too much with having fibromyalgia, but I'm trying to get a little bit better with my health, my physical health, as well as my mental health. And that's all we can do. So be patient with me, please. Um, I'm taking one step at a time, and that's all I can do. But I'm trying to get the I'm trying to get more videos done and I'm trying to be a better person. So all that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got something out of it. And if you need and if you're a man watching this and you're going through anything like this and you live in the UK, do not think twice about going to Andy's Man Club. Every Monday evening you've got somebody to talk to, no judgment. Everybody is in the same boat. But that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, as always, stay safe and take care. God bless and bye for now. <laughs>